The Worker Protection Standard, or WPS, is part of the Federal Code of Regulations. While farm owners and their immediate family are exempt from some of these regulations, law mandates that agricultural employers inform and train their farm workers in pesticide safety once a year. This video will give you a better understanding of the potential risks associated with your work. It will also inform you of what you can do to protect your health, the health of your co-workers, and the health of your families from pesticides and pesticide residues at your work site. In addition, this video lets you know what your employer will do to protect you from pesticide contamination in the workplace. To protect the crops on our farms, we use products known as pesticides. These are applied as liquids, sprays, powders, granules or gases. Pesticides are often hard to detect after they have been applied, but remains of that pesticide or pesticide residue may still be found in and around the treated area. During your workday, you may come into contact with pesticide residues. These may be found on the leaves, stems, fruits and vegetables of treated plants, on application equipment, on some irrigation equipment, and on empty pesticide containers. You may also come into contact with pesticide residues in irrigation water, in areas used for storing, mixing, and handling the pesticides, and in the soil. You may also find pesticides and or pesticide residues in the air as dust, vapors, or as drift when a nearby pesticide application spreads beyond the application site. Pesticide exposure can be hazardous to children and pregnant women. Keep all non-working family members and children away from areas where they may risk exposure to pesticides and pesticide residues. Empty pesticide containers are never completely free of pesticide residue. Never take a pesticide container home with you. If you come across a pesticide container while you're working, tell your supervisor. The contact you have with a pesticide or pesticide residue is what we call pesticide exposure and may harm some people more than others. Pesticide exposure may result in short-term or long-term illness or injury. This can be the result of a single significant exposure or several smaller exposures. The toxicity of a pesticide is different for different pesticides and refers to the potential harm it can have on your health. An acute pesticide injury is a fast, severe illness that occurs shortly after exposure and may include symptoms such as skin rashes, blisters, skin irritation, eye, nose and throat pain, headaches, sweating, chest pain, difficulty breathing, vomiting or loss of consciousness. This can be serious, requiring medical treatment, absence from work and even death. A long-term or delayed pesticide injury may show up shortly after exposure or it may not show up until long after the exposure has taken place. The illnesses that may result include cancer, miscarriages, birth defects, nervous system disorders and organ damage. A delayed pesticide injury may also result in the development of sensitization or an allergic reaction to the pesticides you have been exposed to. Pesticide illness may also be less severe with symptoms similar to the flu, a cold, heat stress, or food poisoning. Other symptoms can include drooling, very small pupils, tiredness, or dizziness. If you think you have symptoms caused by pesticide exposure, contact your supervisor. He or she will make sure that you get medical attention immediately. Pesticides can be applied directly through irrigation systems. This is called chemigation. The irrigation water used in chemigation may contain pesticide chemicals. Do not drink it or wash in it. When pesticide dust, spray or vapor from a pesticide application spreads beyond the application site, we call this drift. If you are drifted on, tell your supervisor, leave the area and decontaminate immediately. 
Your employer will have decontamination supplies within a quarter of a mile of your work site. These include soap, single-use towels and enough water for emergency washing, emergency eye flushing and routine washing. If another source of clean water, such as a stream, a lake or a spring, is closer to you than these decontamination supplies, use it instead. If you live near areas being treated with pesticides, you can be exposed to pesticides through drift. This may be from the facility you're working in or from a neighboring facility. If this happens to you and you have any health issues after you're drifted on, seek medical attention. A restricted entry interval, or REI, is the length of time you must wait before you can safely enter an area after a pesticide has been applied. When restricted entry interval signs like these are posted, it means that the area has been treated with pesticides and you cannot enter until all these signs have been removed. The length of an REI is not always the same and will vary with the pesticide that has been applied. Your employer will notify you about the treated areas. They may do this by talking to you, with warning signs or both depending on the information on the product label. The oral warning must be given to you at the beginning of your work period or before an application has begun. The information you will be given includes the location and description of any treated area, the dates and times of restricted entry, and instructions to stay out of an application exclusion zone while the pesticide is being applied. During any pesticide application, it is your employer's responsibility to allow only employees equipped with personal protective equipment and special training to enter or remain in the treated area. Employers are required to post information about all pesticide applications conducted on their farm during the last 30 days. This information will be displayed in a central location where it is easily accessible to workers during normal working hours. Your supervisor will inform you where this is. This information will be posted for at least 30 days after the last REI has ended and will include copies of the Safety Data Sheets or SDS, the description of the treated area, the name of the pesticide or pesticides, the active ingredient or ingredients, the EPA registration number or numbers, the dates and times the application started and ended, and the length of the REI. This information will be posted within 24 hours of completing a pesticide application and before workers enter the treated area. After a pesticide has been applied, all information for that application will be kept on this farm for two years. You can request access to this at any time. You may also designate a third party to get this information for you for the time you are employed on this farm. A third party request must be made in writing. The WPS, or Worker Protection Standard, requires agricultural employers to train workers in pesticide safety before entering areas where pesticides have been applied or where there has been an REI during the last 30 days. No field worker should ever be asked to handle pesticides, work on pesticide application equipment, or act as a flagger without the proper training and protection as a pesticide handler. In some instances, your employer may ask you to work in a treated area before the expiration of an REI. This is called early entry work. To do early entry work, you must be at least 18 years old. Your employer must give you additional instruction and information about the hazards of the pesticide that was applied and the task you have been asked to do. You will also be provided with personal protective equipment and the instruction on how to use and remove it properly. Pesticides can enter your body through your skin, your eyes, your nose and your mouth. Many pesticide exposures and injuries in agriculture are the result of pesticides entering the body through the skin. This happens when your skin comes in direct contact with treated plants, soil, irrigation water, farming equipment, dirty hands and dirty work clothes. Pesticides can get into your eyes from pesticide drift, contaminated dust, contaminated plant material 
and contact with your hands. Breathing in pesticide vapors, mist or dust through your nose may occur in the event of drift or if you enter a treated area before and after the REI has ended. The risk of transferring pesticide residues from your hands to your mouth is very real. This can happen when you drink, smoke, eat, chew tobacco or chew gum without first washing your hands. When you eat produce taken directly from the fields without washing it first. By eating or drinking from any container used for pesticides, even if it has been washed, and by drinking irrigation water. Everyone on this farm should be able to act quickly in the case of an incident involving pesticide exposure and know where to find information about the pesticides we are using. You will be informed where you can find the name, phone number and location of the nearest medical facility in case of a medical emergency and where you can find the safety data sheets or SDS. The safety data sheets have the details of the emergency medical treatment, hazard and other information for the pesticides you may come in contact with while working on this farm. If you or a co-worker is exposed to a pesticide, there are some things that can be done immediately before the victim is taken to a medical facility. But always protect yourself from contamination before you step in to help others. If you start to feel sick or your eyes, skin or throat hurt from pesticide exposure, make sure that you see a doctor immediately. In an emergency, your employer must provide you with immediate transportation to the nearest emergency medical facility. Your supervisor will give the emergency medical personnel the safety data sheets or SDS, the pesticide product name, the EPA registration number, the ingredients of the pesticide located on the product label, and a thorough description of what happened. If pesticides get into your eye, flush it out by rinsing with an eye flush kit. If this is not possible, use any source of clean water. Make sure that the water flow is gentle and that the person's head is turned so that the injured eye is below the good eye. This will stop contaminated water from going into the uncontaminated eye. To avoid further eye injury, make sure that the water is clean, not too hot, and never add any substances, including medicines, to the eye flush water. If pesticide is spilled or sprayed onto skin, wash it off immediately with the decontamination supplies. This will stop the skin from absorbing more of the pesticide. If the decontamination supplies are too far away, rinse off exposed areas in the nearest clean water source such as a spring or a stream. Never use hot or cold water as extreme water temperatures can cause further injury. As soon as possible, wash or shower with soap and water, shampoo your hair and change into clean clothes. If a worker accidentally drinks a pesticide, inform your supervisor right away for the correct directions on first aid. If it's faster, take the victim to the nearest medical facility. To avoid the risk of choking, never induce vomiting if the victim is unconscious, laying face up or having convulsions. If you're working in an enclosed area and you or a co-worker start to feel sick or dizzy from inhaling a pesticide, get to fresh air immediately. Loosen clothing to make breathing easier. If someone passes out in an enclosed area, get help. Do not go in after them. Never try to rescue someone who's passed out in a greenhouse or other enclosed area unless you have the special training and necessary breathing equipment. Find someone who can help and get medical assistance as soon as possible. The risk of exposure to pesticides is very real on this farm. To protect yourself and others, make the following routine decontamination procedures a regular part of every workday. Always wear work clothing that protects you from pesticide residues. These include a long sleeve shirt, long pants, shoes, socks, a hat or a scarf. Wash your hands before touching your eyes or mouth. Wash your hands before eating, drinking, smoking, chewing gum, chewing tobacco or using the toilet while at work. As soon as possible, 
take a shower or bathe after your workday. Wash your hair with shampoo and soap and change into clean clothes before you have any physical contact with children and your family. To avoid bringing pesticide residues into your home, we recommend you routinely remove your work shoes before entering your home. Wash your work clothes before wearing them again. Put your work clothes into a bag to prevent others from coming into contact with them and wash them separately from all other laundry. Tell the person washing your clothes that they may have pesticide residue on them. Your facility may be inspected by a pesticide inspector. You cannot be retaliated against for participating in an interview during this inspection, nor can you be retaliated against for complying or attempting to comply with the worker protection standard. The pesticide safety information posted at this facility lists who you can contact if this happens to you. If you suspect that there has been a pesticide use violation, report it to the nearest state or tribal agency responsible for pesticide enforcement. This video complies with the Worker Protection Standard, or WPS, for training agricultural workers in pesticide safety. While you will not be applying or working directly with pesticides, you will be working on or near treated areas. Everything in this video applies to you and is for your own protection, the protection of your co-workers and the protection of your families. If you have questions, ask them. The pesticide safety trainer giving you this training will answer any questions you have. And remember, understanding how to best protect yourself also protects your family, the people you work with, the food we all eat, and the industry that we all depend on.